Hello and welcome to Assembly TV studio Fireside Chat today. Today my guest is Tatu Petersen Jessen. Welcome. Nice to be here. Uh, you are the art director in Global Studios in Rovio. How did you start your career in Global uh, Studios? Or Rovio, to put it may maybe a little bit more simply. Um, uh, I joined Rovio. Uh, a very interesting uh, phase. Uh, I joined Rovio when the movie program had just kicked in, so I get to be uh, got to be like really close to both the movie program and all the games uh, that were done uh, alongside the movie. So it was like a huge learning uh, experience for me, uh, just to be close to that kind of products. Before that, I was uh, working at. Uh, Remedy, uh, Digital Chocolate, Mr. Good Giving, and a few other game companies in uh, Finland and Helsinki area. And our art director is a really big name. Uh, what did your uh, job include? Um, I look into the overall aesthetical quality of all our games. Um, I think with all our, our other art directors. Uh, I um, try to improve our processes and how we're doing games. And I'm kind of an advocate for all kind of artistic values in uh, studio, studio management. Uh, and uh, like, I try to make sure that everybody else in the management also understand the value of uh, art and how important it is that art has always the seat in the decision-making table. And what is the most interesting part for you? Um, I'm. I've always been. Uh, I've always been uh, in love with storytelling. So uh, storytelling is uh, the kind of like, like ultimate love for me in, in, within games. Uh, so uh, that's that's the thing that I find the most interesting. Uh, uh, things in my work. It's not so much about the technical quality, but uh, the decisions made on the... Instead of just making an Angry Birds game, like being there and asking the question from the teams that what kind of an Angry Birds game are we making? What kind of additional stories we could tell with the brand? What kind of uh, new Angry Birds stories we could be telling? Instead of just repeating the old uh, uh, origin story that everybody has already seen and heard and uh, know very well. And you came to Rovio when there was a lot going on, uh, yeah. movie, project yeah. and everything. Uh, did you face any difficulties in the beginning? No, I, I, I uh, joined Rovio to work with uh, mostly people who I knew already from the past. And I, I knew that we have the creative freedom to do whatever we want. And uh, even though that there was like a lot, lot going on in the Rovio when I, when I joined, uh, but I just felt that it was mostly positive and the, the buzz of uh, the new movie coming out and getting to see the movie like 20 times before it got to movie release from, uh, from the from the early sketches and reading through the scripts and seeing how Hollywood big blockbuster productions go. And I got to learn so much from, uh, from how they do visual development and how do they, they do like environmental storytelling and visual storytelling. And uh, we managed to take some of those learnings uh, uh, learnings and apply them to the game development with the products we did uh, alongside the movie, uh, movie. And that's something that I'll be talking a little bit more in the in the seminar that I'll be having here uh, on the Art Tech uh, at five today. Uh, so if if uh, anybody is interested about hearing more about those topics, uh, join me at five at the Art Tech because uh, I love to talk about that. I could talk about it even more than uh, we have time here and what, what we have time in the seminar. Mm. But uh, I'll be here most of the week, and so you can always uh, also come and grab me and just talk me one-on-one on, one, one on those top topics. Uh, oh, that's good to know. <laughs>
just grab your sleeve and yeah. And uh, do I understand right the game that you did in the side? Yeah, um, most latest uh, game that I've been like really uh, hands-on and been uh, very much involved was Angry Birds Evolution, uh, and it um, when the when the movie expanded the the. Um, uh, the Angry Birds brand by bringing uh, bringing the birds, the wings and the legs, and really making them into like uh, uh, three-dimensional characters. Uh, then we we in the Angry, Mer Angry Birds Evolution game we brought hundreds of new characters into the world and expanded it again in a major way. Uh, so that's 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 one of the games that I've uh, probably most. Uh, Best, best to uh, talk about uh, because that's the one that I've been the most closest to. And you're going to talk about this subject more in the seminar: visual storytelling in games, learning from Angry Birds universe. Yes, exactly. Uh, and can you a little bit tell us more about your seminar speech? What are you going to tell us? Um, I'm hoping to give it. Uh, uh, I think the intended audience for that is like anybody who's interested in making any kind of entertainment products, but uh, the people who are somehow involved in making games or would like to be involved in making games. Uh, I try to go through the the, the big uh, big questions of how to tell stories when everybody is skipping your cinematics and not reading any of your texts. So. Uh, trying to provide the basics and fundamentals on uh, how to tell stories through the visuals, how to embed the, the, visual, uh, the visuals with the story tags, and how to infuse story into the actual assets rather than relying just on text and cinematics. Can you give us some sneak peek, uh, one tip how to do it? Um, if I would give only one tip, I would tell uh, pick a symbol. So uh, most big brands and big uh, entertainment products that have become a brand have uh, uh, they have something that is very symbolic, something that is like repeated on all the designs of the the uh, of the game or the brand or the movie. And Hollywood uh, uh, they do it in Hollywood um, and uh, Hollywood animations is that the whole process of uh, set dressing and designing the environments was mostly just asking the questions. Uh, when the, in the Angry Birds movie, it was about the, asking the question of, can we put more feathers there? Mm. It's just like, how can we embed the feather symbols in every design of the environment? And I just found that like amazing. And then after that, after realizing that that's like uh, how you do it in the films, and watching uh, uh, movies from Pixar and Disney, I got to see them in a different way because I started to see that happening in all the movies. And it was uh, natural for me to take those learnings and start applying those in the games we make. Hmm. And yeah, you have mentioned a uh, mentioned couple of times how the Angry Birds movie affected the, how you make the games nowadays mm. and the brand. So there's the characters and also this symbol thing. Yeah. Are there other? Well, uh, I think uh, the movie kind of rejuvenated the brand. Uh, it's a pretty old brand um, already. Uh, we have a lot of legacy. And I think most uh, people who have played our games remember it from the very beginning on playing it on the App Store in uh, uh, when App Store actually came out. Like, there used to be iPhones before App Store. Uh, I think many people don't even remember that. Uh, but uh, Angry Birds just happened to be on the right time, in the right place, and uh, was, uh, was such a simple and enjoyable game to play. And I, I wasn't there when, when that happened, but I just like, remember as a player, uh, just repeating and retrying and retrying, playing the levels. Um, so, so, um, so the what movie was the question changed. again? <laughs> <laughs> what the movie changed? Yeah, yeah well, I think uh, if, if uh, that was the perception of uh, most of the people uh, back then, mm. then the movie rejuvenated the brand again and uh, maybe brought us some uh, totally new audiences 
that either were too young uh, back in the days when Angry Birds and uh, um, for me as an artist the biggest thing is that now we finally had uh, the hands and the, the legs and the, like full uh, everything that we needed to make like really live and uh, expressive animations with them. Mm. And did it bring any new audiences? Uh, I mean, from different con countries that Angry Bo Birds didn't yet mm. concur. Uh, I think Angry Birds already before the movie and definitely after the movie has been like really, really, really well-known brand uh, globally. Uh, but. Uh, Maybe maybe it expanded it a little bit, uh, and like I said, rejuvenated the brand, and that's that's uh, something that we now get to enjoy uh, when we're making new games and uh, constantly working on new uh, Angry Birds games uh, uh, to be released in the future. Is there something that uh, you wish that had gone differently? Uh, not really. I think uh, oh, no. I think uh, I, I think it was uh, like uh, uh, I think it was like uh, I could say that it was like a bigger su bigger success that at least I I was hoping for. Uh, uh, we made made good. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Of course, there's always room to improve, but then again, there's always the new movie. Uh, coming out in uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it uh, brings us like a new opportunity to expand the, the world of Angry Birds. Mm. And the same thing happens with uh, every new game we release. Uh, instead of just like telling the same story all over again, with every new game we make into that universe, it's an, again a new opportunity for us to tell a new exciting story to something surprising again. And uh, that's, that's the nature of uh, games business uh, nowadays anyhow, is that you don't just uh, release and do a post-mortem of uh, what could have been done better, but you, you do uh, improvements on your product, you bring new products to the market. That's how it is, it's kind of a life cycle mm. thing. And uh, like you said, Angry Birds has a great history. Was it hard to come to this big brand as a new art director? Or not as a new in the field, but mm. new in Rovio? Uh, I think I'm still every day, sometimes I'm petrified by <laughs> uh, being surrounded by such great talent. Uh, we have a ton of great, talented artists uh, in Rovio. And there's amazing illustrator, amazing animators, and it's it's just uh, a blast to be uh, surrounded by people like that. But having having the experience from the field and having actually coming from uh, from uh, uh, from uh, Remedy, where I also got to work with like world class teams, and even at uh, Digital Chocolate and Mr. Guri before that, I've been always throughout my career. Uh, surrounded by people uh, who are really talented and really uh, passionate about what they do. And the same thing with Rovio. Uh, coming there, realizing that there's huge amount of talent around you and realizing that, hey, there's also something that they don't know that I know and I can complement their skills and they can complement my skills. But I think that's the same with whenever you join a new company. Uh, that that's how it is. Mm. And yeah, you uh, you mentioned that you had worked with Digital Chocolate and Remedy and a lot of other firms before, mm. and you have uh, been involved more than forty globally published games. Yeah, that's a lot. How yeah. did you al always knew that you want to work with the games? No. <laughs> Where did it and start? Uh, and uh, I think it might be uh, might be weird for uh, some of the people like uh, growing up with games uh, from your very uh, early age and actually uh, having the opportunity to aim the game industry when i was when when i was uh, growing up and when i was uh, looking at what 
was happening around me, uh, it was the internet boom. Uh, the the uh, well, when I was entering the, the job market, that is. Mm. And uh, all my, my uh, friends were uh, working in multimedia companies and uh, advertising agencies. And that was actually where I was heading as well. And when I got my first uh, job uh, in, the, in the gaming industry, I was actually initially worried how that would look like in my, my CV. <laughs> because uh, back then, then gaming in Finland was very niche uh, thing as a as a job uh, as a as a thing to do. So no, uh, I wasn't there. Although I've I've done games since very young age. I think my my first uh, game I made was uh, when I was around eight or nine with mm. Quick Basic uh, programming a simple uh, car game. Uh, and doing small sprites and editing font sheets and uh, doing like that kind of stuff. And actually my roots from there went into demo scene and that's why assembly as a uh, event is very dear to me. Uh, I think it's, uh, I've skipped a uh, skipped few of the latest uh, uh, assemblies, but I think this one is actually my 20th time uh, attending assembly in person. Whoa. That's really nice. Have you also been doing the competition demos. Yeah, that's that's where that that's how I ended up uh, meeting the people who got me into the industry. Ah. So uh, a lot of the people who then ended up working in advertising agencies and multimedia companies, I met them at assembly um, or the other demo parties around that time. Uh, same with the gaming companies that I joined. Uh, uh, when I joined Mr. Good Living, and I just noticed that there was like so many uh, uh, familiar faces from uh, demo scene, and I felt like right at home. Mm. Uh, so this is kind of a special uh, place for me. Uh, and I think the first time I uh, joined uh, was uh, partici participating in a, a assembly was in uh, 1996. So this is also the place where it was when uh, when uh, when I was uh, here. It had just a uh, motion center. Mm. So I was actually positively surprised that it has now come back from uh, back to here from uh, the Hartwell Arena where it was like a few years ago. Yeah. And uh, are there some uh, works that you are really proud of back in the days or? Some that was your favorite to do. Um, I think uh, there's uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of demos from around uh, 2000 something that uh, I'm uh, I'm still pretty proud of. Mm. But back then we had no way of learning the tools from YouTube. YouTube didn't didn't exist. Mm. So. When I was doing graphics for for uh, some of the demos, I was just trying every button in 3ds Max and trying to uh, figure out, or it actually it probably was 3D Studio, not even Max back then, but trying to figure out like every possible button and what does this do and figuring it out myself. Mm. Same with all the how to do bit bitmap uh, sprites and. Uh, um, we had to just trial and error everything. We couldn't watch tutorials. Uh, so the learning by doing is also like something that I think everybody from that generation should be really proud of, that we actually managed to get something on the screen. Uh, and it managed to look at least somewhat decent. Mm. And uh, I think that there are really many uh, also, participants in here that are thinking that they want to start their career in game yeah. industry, and you uh, you kind of said that you find uh, found your friends in the demo scene. Yeah, and I think uh, I think um, um, especially those who are here uh, that are interested more about the modding and uh, doing demos and uh, doing graphics and. Uh, uh, I think this is like a really great place to meet up with uh, other likely minded uh, people and network because networking uh, 
I think I didn't understand it back then, but uh, it has affected my career a lot. And uh, nowadays it's also a little bit more experienced people and start networking with them. So like if there's somebody who has some amazing uh, shader work or uh, uh, some VFX uh, running on Unity or some uh, custom just uh, on C, just like bring them on me and like show them to me and uh, talk to me and we can uh, start figuring out if there would be uh, some uh, opportunities at Rovio, for example. Mm. Uh, so I think this is kind of an interesting uh, atmosphere and place and uh, forum for people to reach out to people uh, like, like myself and, uh, and uh, just getting exposed, uh, getting, uh, getting your works exposed uh, to other people getting feedback, getting uh, opportunities. So um, uh, the first thing to do is to make some samples and then just grab your sleeve and come to talk to you or some yeah. other yeah. game maker. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing nowadays that uh, nowadays the information is available for everybody. There's the tutorials, there's, uh, there's uh, likely minded people at gatherings like these just start doing stuff. Mm. Start doing the demos, start doing the games you want to make, uh, join a game jam, uh, or just start uh, working on some assets that you think could make into a game. And if you find uh, that like making game assets is something that you want to do, try to find somebody who uh, is uh, equally um, excited about programming games and start making games with them, and and then you end up with something to show, uh, which is always good when you're applying a, a job in the industry to actually be manage to show that you've already done that, what the employer uh, is expecting. Mm, and yeah, Aston Blue is a really great place to make new contacts. Yeah. Are there some other events that you could recommend? Um, I've been a little bit, uh, a little bit outside the demo, uh, demo scene uh, lately. Uh, I think uh, I've been less active for three, four years already because of uh, my family and so forth. Activated again in uh, text mode graphics scene and started doing ANSI graphics again. Mm. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, events worldwide. Um, I think with a little bit of Googling, uh, people can find uh, different parties. The party, uh, the gathering, uh, alt parties, if those are still going on. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different uh, events like this uh, that people can join. And then I, I recommend people joining the different kind of game jams and uh, events like that, if they're interested in games, that is. Mm. Thank you, Tatu, for being our guest tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. And everybody, remember to go check his seminar at 5 o'clock in the Art Tech Seminars. And thank you for watching Fireside Chat. See you soon.